way of life that God has given us. Now, beloved, this morning I'd like to uh, move on a little bit from there. Having given us that focus of needing to develop God's way of thinking and, 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 and that we need to apply it in our lives, uh, I would like to talk about finishing strong, about enduring to the end. Because you see, you can have God's way of thinking, you can have God's mindset, but if you do not have that thought process or, or that, that, that fortitude to finish strong, that, that grace to move forward that regardless of what's going on in your life, you will get to the finish line. Uh, it will be of no value to you and to me. Amen. Because, beloved, it is not the finishing, the starting that matters. It is how you finish. It is not how you start. We may start poorly and finish strong. It is not how you start. Some people start very strong. How many have watched marathons? When people are running a marathon, there's so many people that start very well, very powerfully, but they never finish the race. It is in the finishing, beloved, that you get the crown. The crown is not given for starting the race. The crown is not given for, for, for at least having the idea of starting or, or going halfway. The crown is only given when you finish the race. So, uh, as much as we can talk about living the kingdom life, as much as we can talk about having the mindset of God, we also need to have that mindset that we will finish the race, that we will finish this game of life. You know, especially in seasons like this, so the seasons of pandemics and things like that, these are what we call trials and tribulations and challenges. There is a lot of falling by the wayside. I have had the misfortune of, of knowing people that have said, well, I prayed for my loved one and God did not deliver them, so I'm not going to serve this God anymore. I have seen people go away from the things of God in this short period of time. People that were on fire for God and are no longer even wanting to hear about God. At the same time, we are seeing people that were not in Christ that are coming to the Lord. So, you know, it's, you, you never want to see people falling away. You want to see people coming in. Amen. So we need to be able to finish this rest. Let's finish the rest. Amen. So this morning I'm speaking about finishing the race that is laid before us. Finishing this race race. Having that kingdom mindset, we now need to look and know that we can finish this race. Jesus talks about it. He says, he who endures to the end is the one who will be saved, beloved. It is not in the starting, but in the finishing. Look at, uh, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll look at a few scriptures this morning as we talk about finishing uh, strong. Look at uh, Mark. We can begin reading from Mark in Mark chapter number 13. In Mark Chapter number 13. Mark chapter number 13. And, uh, and uh, uh, actually, let's look at Matthew 24. Matthew chapter number 24. Matthew chapter number 24 and verse number 13. Matthew 24 and verse number 13. Let's, look at, let's start from verse 12. From verse number 12. The Bible reads... In verse number 12, and because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. Beloved, this is a time that we are living in. When you look at that in context, Jesus was talking about the signs of the times and the end of the age. And he was saying that towards the end of life, towards the end of the age, there will be an increase of lawlessness. The Bible says, and because lawlessness will increase, will abound, the love of many will grow cold. But he, verse number 13, but he who endures to the end shall be saved. Not he who starts, but he who goes all the way to the end will be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom uh, will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations. And then the end will come. So this was Jesus here. He was talking about our positioning for the end times. And he was saying those of us that go all the way to the end, we will 
get to the finish line. When you get to the finish line, beloved, you will find that you will overcome. Uh, the writer, one of the wisest man on earth, Solomon, he wrote in Ecclesiastes chapter number 9. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse number 11. This morning I just want, remember we were saying that God's way of thinking is his word. So we want to look into his word for encouragement to remind us and to know that we can finish this race. And to know that this race, beloved, is not a, a, it, it, it's not a cakewalk. We have to apply ourselves. We have to put in effort. It is not an easy walk. Hallelujah. Ecclesiastes chapter number 9 and verse number 11. The Bible says, I returned and saw. I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong. No bread to the wise, no riches to men of understanding, no favor to men of skill. But time and chance happen to them all. So when you look at this, it says the race, looking at the beginning of the scripture, the race is, is, is not for those that are only fast. It's not just for those that are, that are strong. But every one of us, we have an opportunity to endure to the end. We have an opportunity, beloved, to endure to the end. And, and, and one of the things that are critical in life is how we pass the tests of life. Because, you know, if there were no tests in life, if there were no problems, if there were no challenges, we would not be talking about enduring to the end. Because it would be a cakewalk. Everybody would be going forward and enjoying life until their time on earth is over. But look at what James says in James chapter number one. In James chapter number one, James talks about how, what our position should be. Hallelujah. In James chapter number one, the Bible reads, let me get there. In James chapter number one, and uh, if you look at uh, verse number 12, verse number 12. The Bible says, first let's look at uh, verse number 2 and 3. We'll look for uh, James chapter 1 verse 2 to 4 and then we'll jump to verse number 12. The Bible reads, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work. That you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Verse number 12. Blessed is the man who endures temptation. For when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. You see, endurance, beloved, has an end result. Endurance as an end result. I'm reminded of a man in scripture. When you look at Job, when you look at the story of Job, Job was a man who had everything. Job was a man who could overcome because he had wealth. You're looking for wealth, he had it. You're looking for friends, he had friends. You're looking for, there was nothing that you and I are, are, are looking for that Job lacked. Job had no lack. But look at the challenges that he went through. Look at the challenges and the problems that he went through. He lost everything. I relate Job and I look at the pandemic today. I look at how we are many of us, our lives when we started, we were all set for this year 2020. We were all set in how we were living our life. We had jobs, we had plans, business was roaring. Vacation time was planned. The bank was enjoying our money. And then the pandemic hit. Most people lost, a lot of people lost employment. Jobs were lost. Suddenly, lives were upended. Challenges in the homes. All kind of situations has come in. Death. Struggle, so many issues. This is what Job was also going through. 
Job went through that same season where he lost everything. Job went through a season where it seemed like God was so far away. And many of us, we get to that place where we feel like God is so far away. We feel like God is not there. But I've come to submit to you, beloved, in this short time, that it is how you handle these tests of life that will cause you to overcome. It is how you, you perceive life, how you look at life. If we look at it through the eyes of God and know that tests and challenges will come and our role is to dig in and to endure, the Bible is very clear. The Bible says you will finish strong. The Bible says you will get to the end. You see, many of us, we, 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 we complain, we, 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 we look at how things are and say, why has this happened? Why should this happen to me? Why me? Why in the season? This was my year of victory. This was my year of doing this and that. God, you are so unfair. I just started a new job and now I have lost my job. I just started a new business. I just sunk in all my money into this business and now my business is shutting down because of the pandemic. I had just become a new believer in the Lord and now look at God what you have done. You have taken away my loved ones. You have taken away my means and sources of joy. So you find that we are going through a lot of these things and we are always looking back to how things were. It's so amazing that we keep hearing all of these things, especially from believers, how things were before the pandemic. I submit to you that things that were before the pandemic were before the pandemic. And if we keep looking back, we will become like Mrs. Lot. You see, Mrs. Lot spent time crying over what was remaining in Sodom, and yet God was taking them to a new place. And when she turned back, she turned into a pillar of salt. So many of us, we may not turn into a physical pillar of salt, but we will be stuck in, 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 in an inglorious position, always crying about what was lost and never reaching forward so that we can finish strong. I submit to you, child of God, that whatever you have, I heard somebody one time say that if you're given lemon, make lemonade. I submit to you that even in the season, it is time to make a great lemonade. It is time to start lemon stands. It is time for you to actually bring refreshing to other people. But you cannot do it if you do not understand that tests of life are, are, are seasons that we must pass through. Tests of life are seasons that we must overcome. That if we do not overcome these seasons, we will be stuck in these inglorious positions. That is why Job said in, 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 in Job chapter 13 and verse number 15, in Job 13 and verse number 15, Job said, Lord, though you slay me, I don't understand. Maybe this problem has come from you. In the case of Job, God allowed it. You see, the Bible says God does not bring the evil on you, but he allows it. In the case of Job, God removed the hedge of protection. I submit to you that even in this pandemic season, there are some believers whom God has removed the hedge of protection around. Why? Because he wants to test you. The purpose of the test is for perfection. The purpose of the test is for God to refine you. You see, the, the purpose for, of, of Satan bringing temptations and problems is to, for you to come to your worst position. But the purpose of God allowing the test in your life is for him to refine you so that when you come out, you come forth as pure gold. I remember, I think it was the Apostle Peter who says that when you have endured this test, you will come forth as pure gold. Listen, beloved, the most precious stones in this world, when they are seen, they, when they come out of the ground, nobody loves them. But after they have gone through the fire, after they have been refined, after they are going through the trouble, everybody wants to buy them. Why? Because a test, when you come from a place of, 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 of testing, when you come through the fire, your life can never be the same. So you have to understand this child of God, that whatever you are going through, whatever situation, whatever condition that this pandemic has brought, treat it as a test that you must pass in life. Job had everything going for him. He had everything going for him, but he realized and understood that with this thing that is happening, I don't know where it has come from. Now, if you know the story of Job, beloved, you know that God, Satan petitioned God for Job's life. We don't know, maybe he's petitioned God for your life. And in this pandemic season. So it is what you do. And that is why Job says, Though he slay me, 
yet will I trust him. Yet will I trust him. In fact, if you remember the story of Job in Job chapter 1, when Satan came to God, he said, Job only serves you because you have blessed him. Job only serves you because you have increased him. Job only serves you because you have prospered him. And God, that's when God said, really? You think so? Well, I take away everything. Go and deal with him. And let's see if he'll stop serving me. And that's the question I pose to you. Do you serve God only because he has blessed you? Do you serve God because he has given you finances? Because he has given you a job? Do you serve God because he has given you a wife, a husband? Do you serve God because he has given you children? Why do you serve God? Do you serve God for the material? Or do you serve God for who he is? And that was the position of Job. Serving God for who he is. Hallelujah. Listen, beloved. When you serve God for who he is, you'll be put to the test. You will be put to the test. And you need to understand that if you are faithful to God, it does not matter when the storms of life come. When the storms of life come your way, what will you do? Listen. I keep saying this for a while because I've been hearing so many believers talk about this. I keep talking about how we, you know, our, 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 our theology is a little flawed in the sense that we think that the Christian walk must be a life of bliss. The Christian walk must be a life of good things. When bad things happen to us, we feel like we have done something wrong. We feel like God has left us. We feel like uh, maybe is it sin in our lives? What is going on? You know, when something, I remember growing up in the things of God, when something is go, not happening, the people around me, would. the first question they would ask me was, have you sinned, my brother? What is going on? Because we always think that we, we, when we are going through trouble, we are going through sickness, we are going through uh, the pandemics, because even in this pandemic, we are seeing other people going up and others are going down. So we are thinking, why is somebody else succeeding and I am not, even in this pandemic? Does that mean God has left me? You see, so I believe this is an important question and issue that needs to be addressed in the body of Christ and to know that whether you prosper or not, God is with you. The issue is, are you with God? Are you with God? Look at the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter number 2. In 1 Corinthians chapter number 2. And uh, 1 Corinthians chapter number 2. Oh, no, let me give you, sorry, 2 Corinthians. Let's go to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter number 1. Let's look at uh, verse number 8 to verse number 11. 2 Corinthians chapter number 1 from verse number 8. The Bible reads, For we do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, of what? Of the trouble. So they came through some trouble. Amen? And where was this trouble? In Asia. We were burdened beyond measure. I want you to think about this. He says, we were burdened beyond measure, above strength. So that we despaired even of life. What is he saying there? He's saying, I went through a lot of problems. Now, this is the Apostle Paul. This is the man that has written most of the New Testament. And he's saying, I went through a lot of trouble. You would expect that God is protecting him, right? He says, I went through so much trouble that I even wanted to die. How many of you have got to that place where you just feel like, man, I would rather just die? He says in verse number 9, yes, we have the sentence of death in ourselves to the end that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God who raises the dead. Who delivered us from so great a death and does deliver us in whom we trust that he will still deliver us. What does that scripture tell you and me? That scripture tells you and me that tests will come our way. Tests will come our way. 
to show the degree of strength that we have in God. Now, tests come to tell you and I that we cannot rely on man. You see how Paul, I love the scripture in, uh, in uh, verse, number, verse number 9. The Bible says that the troubles that we went through, the problems and issues that we encountered were such that God could not help us. I mean, rather, man could not help us. We got to the place where we can only trust in God. And why was he saying, but in God who raises the dead? He was saying, if God can raise the dead, he can help me in my situation. God can help me in my situation. Beloved, Paul went through such a rough time. But what kept him through is that enduring faith. That knowing that I must finish to the end. When you read the life of Paul, he kept saying, I'm running this race. I'm running this race. To the end of his life, he says, I have run this race. I have completed the race. But this race was not without trouble. It was not without challenges. It was not without trials. My question, beloved, to you is, the tests of life, the trials of life, how are you handling them? Are you handling them in such a way that you can finish strong? Are you handling them in such a way that God will be well pleased with you? How are you handling the trials of life in your life? We are in this season, and whatever we are going through in this season, beloved, God is in control. Whatever we are going through, God is in control. Hallelujah. God is in control. And I submit to you that whatever you and I go through, there is nothing impossible in God. When we look at the trials and the challenges we see, we'll find that restoration is always the end result of passing the test. We read a scripture that says that when you endure, you will receive the crown of life. God will deliver you and I out of every trial. In 2 Corinthians chapter 1, Paul says that God delivered us from so great a death, past tense, and does deliver us, present tense, and trust him that he will still deliver us, future tense. So God is a God of deliverance in the past, is a God of deliverance in the present, and is a God of deliverance in the future, whatever you are going through. You see, when we are going through things of life, when we are going through the challenges of life, it looks like there is no hope. It looks like whatever we are going through, there is nothing that can change. But I, I, I submit to you, when we look at scripture, when we look at examples in the Bible, look at Joseph. Whoever thought Joseph would become the second in command in Egypt. Think about that. Look at the troubles he went through. Being in the pit. Becoming a slave in Egypt. Becoming a prisoner. It didn't look like his life would change. 13 good years of suffering before there was a manifestation of his life, in his life. But what is it that kept him through. One little word, beloved, called integrity. One little word called integrity. Trusting in God no matter what comes your way. I believe that even in this pandemic season, your integrity will carry you through. What is integrity, beloved? Whatever you say is who you are. Do you say you're a Christian? Then be the Christian you need to be. You say you're a child of God? Be the child of God you need to be. What does that mean? Having the kingdom mindset means that whatever God says in his word, I will follow. It may not be comfortable for me, but I will follow it. In fact, what delivered Job was what? His integrity. In fact, that's what God said about Satan. To Satan, he says, have you considered my servant Job? Job is a man of integrity. I'll take everything away, but I know that his integrity is what will keep him. In fact, his wife even came and told him, curse God and die. Why do you still hold on to your integrity? Why? Because, beloved, when everything you have is lost, it is your integrity that will keep you. If you do not have integrity, it doesn't matter what you have. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what you can achieve. Before God, you are nothing. Child of God, hear me and hear me well. If you are going to finish 
this race. Begin to search your heart. Where is your integrity level? Are you good for your word? Are you good for who you say you are? And I'm speaking here from the Christian perspective and from your daily life perspective. You know how sometimes you can tell somebody, my sister, I'll come and visit you tomorrow. And she'll look at you and laugh and say, ah, <laughs> he told you he's coming. Why are you even cooking? Why? Because the man has no integrity. When he says, I'll come to your house tomorrow, it's a hit or miss. There's no integrity there. Haven't you met people like that? They tell you, I love you, but what they do is very different. There's no integrity. Integrity is what I say is who I am. To my pain, to my hurt. In fact, Paul, I think David said that. He says, I, I, I helped my friends even though it was to my own hurt. I helped my friends. But when it came for their turn, all they did was insult me and throw me under the bus. So, in the midst of these challenges that we are going through, people are looking for the Christian to help them through. You are not going to say, well, you see, I am also going through my issues. I am also going through this and that. Your integrity is set in the word of God. Having that kingdom mindset will cause you to have integrity in life. When you have integrity in life, people will trust you. When you have integrity in life, people will look to you and will count on you. When you say, I am not able, they will trust you. When you say, I'm going through this, they will trust you. Why? Because you're a man or a woman of integrity. Hallelujah. How many of you know uh, 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 this? I know we have some salesmen in here, so... But I'm just saying this generally. You find that many times when you go to buy something at the sale and you say, well, they tell you how good this thing is. You always listen with three ears, right? Because you're not sure. Are, are, are they really saying this? Are they really saying this? Let me tell you. You know, you know these things happen. Why? But have you noticed that when you're trying to buy something and you're asking for second opinion, Usually somebody will tell you and say, can you go to so and so? Why? Because what they sold them performed exactly as it said. They even told them, look, this thing has some minor blemishes, but uh, it still works well. And th that is how salespeople get repeat business. Why? Because integrity is key. It's the same thing with the body of Christ, with the child of God, with the believer. Beloved. I would have you understand that if you're going to finish strong, you need to endure to the end. If you're going to finish strong, you need to develop endurance. And how do we develop this? Number one, we need to understand that tests are part of life. The things we are going through right now in this pandemic, God has allowed this pandemic to happen, but we need to look at this as part of the tests of life. And because it's part of the tests of life, we need to understand that we must pass the test. If we don't pass the test, we will not walk in the crown of life. Trust me, pandemic is temporary. It may last a year, may last two years, may last three years, it may last nine months. Regardless, it is temporary. But what you do in the season will determine your post-pandemic life. So many of us, we are going backwards instead of going forward. So understand that tests will come. Some of us will even get sick and we will recover. Some of us will even get sick and our loved ones will pass on. But these are all part of the tests of life. Amen. They are all part of the tests of life. We need to understand, number two, that restoration is always the end goal for God. Restoration is always the end goal. We see it in the life of Job. We see it in the life of Joseph in the tests that he went through. We see it in the life of Ruth in the tests, the challenges that she went through. Uh, uh, we see... Some in the test of Daniel and the, and, and the end result. We see it in the three Hebrew boys and the end result. We see the apostle Paul himself, even with what he wrote, we see the end result. Restoration is always the end goal for God. So the issue then is how you handle your trials, how you handle your tests. The third thing, beloved, is that in the midst of your tests, walk in integrity. Walk in integrity. Whatever happens, walk in integrity. Even in marriage, 
personally, I've, been, I've, I've had this practice of marriage for a few years now, a, more, almost three decades. One thing, beloved, I have found is that when you have integrity, your spouse will believe in you. When you have integrity, your, your wife will trust you, your husband will trust you. When you have no integrity, it will be difficult. Even the day you're telling the truth, you'll be like that little dog on a, sitting on a pin, you know. Eh, eh, eh. The day that the pin really hits, they'll just look at you and say, ah, we know you. Integrity. That's how God also looks at us the same way. In the midst of these trials and tests, beloved, it is the attitude you carry that matters. What kind of attitude do you have? Do you have that winning attitude that comes from God? Do you have that winning attitude that comes from God? See, many of us, we prolong some of the challenges we have because of the attitudes we carry. When we have poor attitudes, we have wrong attitudes towards our trials and towards our tests of life, you find that our faith actually goes down. Complaining, grumbling, sulking, bitterness, false accusations, they won't take you anywhere. The poor attitude. The last thing, beloved, I want you to tell you is that whatever you are going through, as you develop endurance, if you are going to finish strong, let God handle it. Let God handle your affairs. Let God handle your affairs. Four things we've talked about today as we go through this process. Know that tests will come. Know that restoration is always your end goal for God. Walk in integrity. Have the right attitude. And let God, beloved, handle the issues. Whatever you're going through in this pandemic season, know that these are tests of life and you will overcome depending on where you are. Now, all of this, beloved, is just a motivational talk if we have not made Jesus our Lord and Savior. I'm speaking from the position of a believer, one who has trusted in God, one who has trusted in God. They will trust and know that God delivered me, God will deliver me in the current situation, and even if another thing comes in the future, God will still deliver me. May the Lord give you that conviction to accept him not only as Savior, but to make him Lord over your life. Because when you make him Lord over your life and your life becomes hidden in Christ, he takes over and he causes you to run this race. Remember, the race is not to the swift. It's not to those who think you are, they have all the ability. No. Time and chance happen to all. Each one of us, we have an equal opportunity to pass the test of life and get the crown of life. May God bless you. Amen. Amen. Let's just take a minute and just pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you this morning. We thank you, Lord, because your eyes are upon us. Lord, we thank you because... When you allow the trials and tests of life to come our way, you also always make our way of escape. This morning I commit each and every one under the sound of my voice, those of us that are here, those that are watching online, and those that will watch, oh Lord, in the future. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you help us to endure. Grant us, oh God, patient endurance. For he who endures to the end will be saved. I pray, Lord God, that you strengthen us, strengthen our resolve, and cause us to keep our eyes focused on you, even as we go through life, day by day, even in the season. To the end, O oh God, that we may be established in you, in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I commit this week into your hands. Go before us and direct our steps and lead us in the way that we should go. Even, O oh God, as we continue to develop a kingdom mindset. In Jesus' name, amen.